Hey witches, welcome back to the channel. This is Hectarios. In this video, I want to do a couple updates. But the main topic of this video is basically kind of just a word of encouragement of basically, you know, cast your spells. There's a message that's coming through to me, which is cast your spells, okay? This is a powerful time right now. The energies are rising with Goddess Hecate. We are becoming more empowered. Um, you know, this is the time to cast your spells, okay? Um, embrace your magic, do your magic, and exert your will. This is the time, okay? If you needed to hear this message, if you've been waiting, this message is for you. Exert your will. Okay, put forth your desire, your wishes, your needs, your wants. Put that forth into the universe. Okay, now is time. Cast your spells and, you know, use your tools. Okay, do ritual. Cast your spells, make mojo bags, do candle work. It is time to work the magic, okay? Um, I do want to just give y'all a brief update. I had mentioned about my journey into Norse shamanism, or what's called Sadir, and... Um, really just shamanism in general and so one of the things that I mentioned in a previous video for my Q&A I was talking about the, the, the furs that I got to use and to wear during this practice because in shamanism um, the shaman the practitioner would wear or does wear animal furs because it gets you close to nature, close to the animal spirits, and animal spirits are much more closer to nature than humans are because we have civilization and society and all of that, um, at least in modern times. And animals are more, you know, in, in they're in it, they're in nature. So wearing their furs um, helps to get you into a more primal animalistic mindset which is closer to nature closer to the divine closer to the spirit world okay so that's my take on it at least and so I did buy some furs recently um, I'm not one to in any way condone animal abuse or anything like that um, Y'all know I love animals to death, but I do think that for spiritual practices in particular, it's okay to wear furs. I wouldn't wear it um, just as fashion, not when there's an option to wear fake fur, but for the practice of spirituality, like this on my altarpiece, this is a real rabbit fur that I just have on my altar, um, which is not, it's a byproduct of food. It's not just, um, like hunting and killing the animal just for the fur to sell. They eat rabbits and they sell the fur. Okay. So that's respectful to me because they're taking another part of the animal and they're using it um, or they're selling it for other people to use it for art and crafts and stuff like that. So to me, there's nothing wrong with that. And I do eat meat, so I'm not, a, I'm not vegan and I'm not against eating meat or anything like that. But I am against animal abuse and wearing fur as fashion um, or hunting animals um, that are not eaten, but they're just killed for the fur to be worn as fashion. I think that is wrong. At the same time, though... That's my personal opinion, and I don't judge others. You know, it is what it is. So, anyway, 
I'm going to show you all the furs that I got. So that's why I preceded this with everything that I just said because I know that a lot of people are against use of furs and stuff like that. So I'm sorry if this video is not for you. You might want to turn it off. So first of all, I got this, which is, it's actually an antique fur stall vintage antique so this animal was not even killed recently at all or these animals um this is this these are silver foxes and it's like an antique fur stall i don't know if y'all can see it that well but i got it to just wear during my journeying shamanic practices and tapping into that current of magic and whenever I wear it I do feel these spirits of these foxes I do feel it's almost like um when you're holding a pet cat or something or your pet dog in your lap and you could just feel their loving energy or that exchange of loving energy between you and your pet I feel that when I'm wearing these I feel like their energy is in the fur I feel like their spirits are around and it's almost like that cuddling vibration feeling. So I don't know. I like it. I'm okay with it. I feel like I'm approaching it respectfully and I do very much appreciate the animals that gave their fur for this. And I feel like they understand that and I feel like they love me back. So. I feel like these two foxes are almost with me as familiar spirits when I'm wearing this and I feel like they are sort of like running around and going out and doing things and it just feels very much like having a pet or a familiar. So I just thought that was interesting to share because I haven't really done any updates on these practices in particular as far as anything practical or too deep I mean I've, I've kind of mentioned that I'm doing this and I've kind of mentioned that I'm like delving into this practice but I haven't really said much about it or anything like that so Yes, I just thought that was an interesting tidbit to share. Um, I feel like the spirits have become as familiar as me when I'm wearing it and getting into that trance state. Or not even necessarily when I'm getting into the trance state. Just when I put this on at all, I could feel their spirits with me and attach to their fur, to their skin. So I don't know. This is all very new to me, once again. Uh, this is a path I'm delving into. I've kind of been studying it for quite a while already, but as far as the practical aspect and experimental aspect and delving into it, um, this is new to me and it excites me in that regard and in that way. Um, but I thought that was an interesting tidbit to share. So, um, I just got these last week. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show y'all is, um, this is a coyote face. I told y'all you're not going to want to watch this if you're kind of like grossed out by this stuff. Um, professionally, of course, taxidermy or whatever you call it, um, tanned and all of that. So it's like leather and stuff, but it is a coyote face. And I got this so that I can make uh, a headpiece with it. You know, you've seen the characteristic shamanic like headpiece type thing. So that's what I'm going to be making with this. I'm going to attach beads and crystals to it and different things like that. Um, I can't say that I have any kind of practical, practical experience to share with this yet because I haven't just gone around wearing it on my head. Um, other than just like 
I just showed y'all like temporarily just briefly looking in the mirror with it um like once or twice since I got it but I haven't like sat there and worn it you know so I can't really say that I have felt the coyote spirit um so far with it but I know that once I get it designed into an actual headpiece you know to wear I'm sure I'll have some sort of similar experience as with the silver foxes because I have sort of worn that stole um you know for prolonged periods of time when I've been having it just like sitting around the house and stuff just to like get into that energy and to feel their energy because it does feel very much loving like cuddling with a pet so I enjoy wearing it um even outside of ritual use or anything like that which I have not used it for any kind of ritual yet but I do think that it's very interesting so I just wanted to share that that's all the furs that I have so far I am going to invest in getting more furs to wear I want something to like wear on my body so I'm probably going to get some like bigger full like hide fur pieces and pelts to design some sort of like um suit type thing with I don't know how to say it or what it would be called but um my shamanistic attire basically so I'm looking forward to that um as well I know that also in the historical records um practitioners of satyr would wear gloves out of animal skins and fur too so I'm probably going to be looking for something like that and if I can't find it I'll probably just buy some furs and leather and just make it myself um but yes that's a little bit of what I wanted to update you guys on and let you know how that's going so far but yes if you have any more questions about that go ahead and leave that in the comments below and I will try to get to it um but once again this is a new path to me so I don't have very much experiential and practical knowledge to share but I do and I have like researched and studied on it for quite a while now um like a couple years before I started trying to do anything with it so um yes if you have any questions about it or questions of what I'm doing with it or anything like that go ahead and leave that in the comments below so back to the original starting point with this video which is cast your spells it is time to do magic it is time to you know get your candle work do your fixed candles it is time to make your mojo bags it is time to you know do your spiritual baths it is time to write your petitions and create your sigils it is time to get really hands-on and physically into crafting your spells and your magic i feel it i know that a lot of people feel it it is the rise of the goddess right now and that power is coming in i honestly kind of just wanted to inspire y'all in this in this video i want y'all to become inspired i'm inspired and i want to share that energy i'm just going to show y'all what i do um with my altar candles you can see there's no candles in these holders right now i'm going to show y'all how i prepare my altar candles for hecate in particular so this is the candle inscriber tool that i created i don't know how well y'all can see it but yes um so first of all i take the candle of course this is already pre-cleansed but if you haven't cleansed it yet you could just pass it through incense milk preferably through sage or cleansing incense I just realized one of my incense went out. But, um, 
Of course, cleanse your tools first. So what I like to do is I inscribe the candle with Hecate's sigil that I created for her um, a few years ago now. Or rather I created the sigil in 2013 so it's been quite a while um, if you want to know what the sigil is it is the symbol that's on my door back there that's the sigil that I created for goddess Hecate um, it's also here on my tattoo um, anyway that's what I inscribe on the candle and then I just write Hecate's name as well. Do your magic, witches. Cast your spells. Carve your candles. Light your candles. Okay. So I do that to both candles. Okay. And I sort of just stick them in the holder. And then I take my Hecate oil. This is the oil that I make. My personal recipe that I got from the goddess in Gnosis. So of course, you can use any Hecate oil or um, any magical oil that you, that feels right to you or that you want to use, but this is what I use. And I take it and I um, dress the candles with it. Put my intention. And this is like consecrating the candles to Hecate. Let me put some on because I'm obsessed with the scent of this oil. This is like the best Hecate oil recipe that I've ever seen. <laughs> if I do say so myself. But I can't really take credit for the recipe because I got it from Hecate. So I don't think it's being too egotistical to say that. I think it's the best recipe. Um, I do sell this oil if you want to get some just contact me through the different ways in the description box if you want to buy some I make batches pretty frequently on the full moons so sort of I just like put it in the candle holder to sort of just hold the candle for me and then I just get it on my fingers and I coat the candle with it So, pretty simple. Of course, you could do a lot more with this. This is just how I do it. Um, sort of as an everyday thing or sort of like run-of-the-mill type uh, when I'm not trying to be too elaborate. Just a simple altar candle consecration. Uh, 
and then I'll just light the match. So that's what I typically like to do with my candles as far as altar candles, just the basic altar candles and not like a ritual candle spell or anything like that. Um, when I do fix candles, I do always put herbs in it and stuff like that. You could also add herbs to your altar candles though if you want to and just uh, kind of get like a tray and grind up your herbs and then coat the candle in oil and then rub or roll the candle through the herbs and um, the herbs will stick all over it and then after that put it in the holder and you will have a really nice uh, magical thing with that so I pretty much do this almost daily you know, depending on what's going on. Or depending if I have let the candles burn out or not. Because sometimes I'll light the candles up and I'll let them burn down while I'm doing stuff. Like when I'm doing my client tarot readings, I light up the candles um, just to be respectful and to fa facilitate Hecate's presence. Someone was asking me, because um, I made the post on Facebook about doing the Q&A, and some people did not get to ask their questions before I started recording the video. So I saw some questions after I posted the videos, and someone was asking me about putting their altar in their bedroom. Like, is that okay? And I think it absolutely is. Um, my altar is in my bedroom and I've always had my altar in my bedroom and I've never had any problems with that um, but I mean it depends on how you live like what is your lifestyle um, you know are, don't be doing stuff in your bedroom that you would consider disrespectful for Hecate to see or witness you know because an altar is a sacred space and it is a it's almost like a miniature temple or area or shrine to the deity so they're present in it and on it and in all of its aura and space so um you know if you're doing stuff in your bedroom that a deity shouldn't see or witness then i don't think that it's a good idea to have your altar in your bedroom um but i think overall it's fine just do what feels right to you i don't think it's absolutely and automatically wrong is what i'm trying to say just do what feels right to you in that regard and be kind of like analytical and smart about it um and someone else was asking me where is it better to have your altar to Hecate facing north, east, south, or west? I think that's an interesting question. I have had my altar in all, facing all directions before, in all different corners and sides of my walls, um, through experimental phases, just to see myself, what works for me. And I would have to say that the least um how do i say this if i had to rank it from least to best uh results or energies or whatever you want to say or categorize it having it on the south is probably the least to me or having it facing south um i just never had much uh good results that way not to say that you won't get results from your magic and stuff, but it's just the least. Um, since you're asking me, I'm going to go ahead and categorize it like that. Having it on the south is the least to me. Having it on the west wall or facing west, um, it carries a lot of 
darker energy I notice it carries a lot more of a serious feeling um, and a feeling of like intense and absolute type energy and it's strong for like banishing type magic and controlling magic and binding magic and that type of darker sterner energy so uh, if that's how you want to work with your rituals and your magic I recommend put your altar facing west and or on your western wall um, right now I have my altar on the eastern wall facing east and to me that is where I notice the best results um, in a general sense um, it seems to be more of like a creative inspiring type of energy and power so that's where I like it where I ended up liking it the most because I've like I said I've tried it on all the different directions and walls and that just seems to be facing east seems to be the best option for me um, I invite you to just experiment with it yourself and see you know what you experience and what you like the most facing north also has a good energy to me it seems very much um similar to east it seems uplifting and you know it almost seems like it's in between the west and the east when you're facing the altar north it seems once again this is just to me it seems like it's more moderate of both the energies in between that severity and sternness of the altar facing west and in between that inspiring creative energy of the altar facing east if you're facing the altar north it seems like it's in between those energies but the best qualities of both um, and I do kind of like my altar facing that direction too um, but I think that I prefer the east regardless anyway the most so that's my two cents on it but once again go ahead and experiment yourself with it and see you know how you like it or what you like with it or what you experiment and experience with it and how that turns out for you so I thought I would go ahead and answer those questions in this video as well um, just because I thought they were like good questions and um, I'm trying to think if there was any more questions that I wanted to answer briefly. Um, someone was asking me about daily offerings to Hecate as well. And I think I kind of covered that already with like the altar candles, like I said, um, I do that pretty much every single day and I light an incense to Hecate. Oh, the incense went on again. This is like the fourth incense I'm burning though so maybe it's like the spirits are telling me enough is enough. But I do offer an incense. Um, usually when I first wake up in the day I offer an incense first thing to Hecate. So I did also, excuse me, mention that in my Q&A video, I said pretty much the same thing. I offered instant psychity every day. I don't ask for anything in return. I just offer her that every day um, as part of my devotion and my respect to her and all of that. So, you know, that's a great, simple daily offering that you can do that lets your deity know you're thinking of them. You're giving them respect, adoration, worship. Um, love and just that you're just giving them not only you're not asking for anything in return when you're doing it you're just giving them a daily offering and I think that just burning an incense is a very simple way to do that or just burning a candle even if it's just one candle a day or something like that um, even if it's just like tea lights or something it's a very small simple offering but it's very much you know it means something that you're daily doing it you're doing it dedicated you're being devoted 
in that way. And it does help align you to that energy as well every single day at the beginning of your day. So it's a great idea and it's a great thing to incorporate. Now, it could be anything that you're offering. You can really offer anything. Um, you know, there is traditional offerings to Hecate um, from like the Greek mythology and the Greek tradition and stuff like that. But uh, I will I will say that it's not limited by that. I have offered Hecate like so many different things that, you know, she receives it regardless anyway because you know it's your intention it's the energy that you're putting into it it's the energy and the care the fact that you're thinking about the deity and that you love them and that you're giving from your heart that's what truly matters when you're giving an offering to a deity um you know it doesn't have to be specific things every single time it's fine and well to give the traditional offerings but it's not necessary you can give anything um of course, you know, be smart about it. Don't just, like, give trash to a deity as an offering, you know. Be smart about it and be considerate. But you can largely give various things and pretty much anything to a deity as long as you're giving it from a sincere place of respect and love. So I figured I'll just answer those few questions at the end of this video, but I did just briefly want to come on here and give an update on the whole Seder practices, kind of inspire y'all to start doing some magic um, and some spell work and some rituals and just get into it and I feel like get hands on with it, get dirty with it, get, you know, get into your craft because now is the time to do so and really put your will forth, okay? So that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned some things and I hope that you, you know, take the advice and start doing some things with it. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Please rate the video. Please leave me a comment and, you know, subscribe if you haven't already and if you found this valuable because there will be more content coming soon. Hail to the witches. Hail Hecate and blessed be.